Okay, so here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4, and I wanted to talk quickly about optimizing movable lights and what does that mean for you in terms of performance inside of Unreal Engine. And if you can look right here, we'll have a light source, so a directional light, and it's currently set to stationary. And I've already baked this scene. You can see that uh, this furniture here is all set to static. And my character, who is a movable object, also is getting a shadow. And what, what can we do to optimize this if it's running kind of slow? Well, what we can do is if we click on our directional light, again, it's set to stationary. What you'll notice is if I come down the light settings here, and by default, sorry for that, you'll notice that there is this little tab right here that said show advanced. If we open that up, and then scroll down to this option called Shadow Resolution Setting. It's currently set to one. If we scrub this down towards zero, I want you to look at the shadow on the character here. And what you'll notice is that it starts to kind of blur out. And the question is, what, what is happening here? Well, because all the other objects are static, they're not moving, their information for their shadows is baked into the equivalent of what's called a shadow mask. So again, think of it as like um, a mask for where shadows and light will fall. So the resolution of that's not gonna change, but our character, he's moving around the scene um, if we were to play. So every single frame of the game, we have to redraw his shadow mask and it's in an, a different mask channel uh, that's unique to just him, so it's its own information. Now, to draw this shadow takes a bit of calculation. We basically have to um, make a mask based on the geometry uh, based on him to create this and then the resolution of that shadow so if I zoom in here I can even go higher than one um, and I can make it really crisp and we can go lower than one this means that it's going to create a smaller texture to save that shadow mask into and this can be a pretty big savings in terms of how fast it has to build this texture every single frame so the default in Unreal is to one I sometimes like to come in here and set it to like 0.8 you don't even really see necessarily a change, but you're gonna save time in terms of generating that shadow mask every frame. Now, a couple other things. If we were to set this light to be fully movable and then rebake the scene, or we not even have to, if we come down again to that shadow mask, um, resolution quality, I think we're going to have to rebake here. What you're gonna notice is that we will get a change on all the objects because that light is now fully dynamic. And this is something that you can start to control in your scenes and decide what quality of shadow is acceptable. You might even like the, the look of the softer, smaller shadow on your dynamic objects. So again, if we come in here, we can start to play around with that and modulate that value a little bit. So we can play, take a look at the quality. Now, another thing I want you to look into is, let's say we add in a spotlight and we have it in our scene. Another optimization we can do, so let's delete this right here for now, and it's gonna scream at us, is I'm gonna come in here and add in a movable light, not even a stationary light. Now, what is the cost of a movable light in our scene? Well, the real cost in our scene is anything that falls within the uh, light's attenuation radius, which is this outer cone. So if we know that we really only want this area to be affected, what we'll do is we'll take the outer cone, we can bring it in, kind of shift it over. And I like to do a little bit of a outer cone and then use the inner cone setting, which is usually set to zero, to bring a little more brightness to the area I want. Think about the inner and outer cone as just being a fall off of intensity from the two. And from here, what we can do is we can come down again into our shadow resolution and you can see that that updates. So I might not, I might like this kind of lighter look at 0.2 intensity and that's gonna render a lot faster. And also by bringing in that attenuation radius, you might've lost some of the brightness you needed so another thing we can do, which isn't an optimization in terms of performance, but we can also set this light. If we come to the light setting here, let me open this up. We can use, where it says use inverse squared. This basically tells the light as it 
every meter it goes, it loses half its energy. And that can be great for a realistic result, but if you need something that's more specific for gameplay, you can always come in here and turn this off. You can see it's super bright right now. I'm gonna turn this down. I'm gonna come into the intensity here and bring this way back. So let's just put like 100 in, or maybe even 10. Let's start there. And then what we can do is we can come back down where we had use inverse square, light fall off exponent, and we can just kind of tune this in to how much, uh, basically how fast the light lose its energy. So eight is about default to what the other light was. So anything lower, this will give us more of a consistent light throughout this entire cone. So again, in closing for optimizing movable lights, you want to be setting uh, their shadow resolution, the map they have to generate every frame to whatever you think is acceptable for the sharpness of the shadows you're looking for. And also don't be afraid to, on a light that has an attenuation like a spotlight, to make sure that you only have it going as far as it needs to go. That also includes if you had meshes below the floor, we would need to make sure that we came in here, again, uh, to attenuation radius and pulled it up. So that way it's only hitting as much as we need to get the light intensity we needed. So I hope you like this. If you did, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.